You know TNA must be doing something right. If it's managing to pull back in fans that swore they'd never watch TNA again. One of those fans be the guy with me here today, making his three-year-long return to TNA reviews. Everyone, welcome back, the other guy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is the other guy. So basically, um, I was reading that Derek Bateman came to TNA... And I, I actually really loved this guy in WWE. I really wanted him to get pushed. So when he got released, I was pretty pissed off. But when I read that he was in TNA, I was like, eh, maybe I'll check it out, maybe not. And then, you know, a lot of guys quit. You know, Hulk Hogan's gone, Bischoff's gone. And then one day MTO said, you know what, it's actually not that bad. So I was like, you know what, I'll check it out one week. And um, the week I checked it out, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I feel like TNA is headed in the right direction. I feel like um, in a year's time, depending on how the, the risks they take are going to go, they're either going to be out of business or in better shape than they've been in the last four years. Right, and I have my own personal gripes with TNA after Bound for Glory, but I feel like I would regret not talking about the show because I can tell, based on all the progress they've made, I'm probably going to look back at this time and say that this was one of my favorite periods in TNA. So we're just going to talk over about some of the things that we've enjoyed about TNA as of lately. Not necessarily everything. We'll go into more detail next week, but this is just what we've enjoyed so far. Apparently I was right in my review three months ago, and Vince Russo really is working for TNA again. And you can definitely tell a difference, which is one of the biggest reasons why I can't stay mad at TNA. I love Russo. The guy knows how to make wrestling fun. The characters, the gimmick matches, the storylines, the swerves. You notice how improved TNA has been in all these areas ever since Russo came back? And what's funny to me is that when Vince Russo left TNA in 2011 is when I started getting bored of TNA. It's why I never wanted to review it. Ironically, now that TNA has that Russo touch again is when I'm genuinely starting to enjoy what TNA is doing right now. So in part, thanks to Vince Russo, we finally have intriguing characters and storylines again. You have guys like Samuel Shaw that were once as bland as Phil Kim's nipples, now all of a sudden turn into the best thing that company has almost overnight. I think I'm a fan of more stars on TNA than I am in WWE. Mr. Kennedy, Velvet Sky, Brooke, they're bringing back other people that I was a fan of, such as MVP and Lashley. There's new characters that I'm starting to get invested in, such as Derek Bateman and Samuel Shaw. They're calling up the only indie girl that was strongly behind them signing in Santana Garrett. They're taking guys that I used to not care about, like Jeff Hardy, and giving them personas that I can actually get behind, like Willow. And all of them are being used in big storylines, they're consistently being featured, and they all have my interest. This is a TNA that I used to love. Thank you, Russo, for bringing this TNA back. Yes, thank you, Russo, for bringing back the interesting characters like Samuel Shaw and, hell, even Willow has got me interested in the product again. And it's not just that, but then, like, he's finding stuff for, like, old guys to do, like Abyss, and Samoa Joe's getting a nice push, and Karengho was feuding with EC3 for a while, so it's not like the veterans aren't doing anything either or just sitting there, you know, wasting away time. So TNA still has some of my favorites, such as Mr. Kennedy and Derek Bateman from WWE. Samuel Shaw is becoming one of my favorites. Brooke, Bobby Roo, Austin Aries, ETC. So, you know, you see that they have a good roster. They just needed a guy to put it all together, put the pieces together, and now it seems like that's finally happening for TNA. Well, hell, I've even been interested in the Gunner versus James Storm feud, and I here's the, I'm a guy who for all intents and purposes, couldn't have cared less about these guys for the past four years. Even though I always knew James Storm was good, I never really cared about him, but it seems like now, all of a sudden, in this feud with Gunner, I care about both guys, even though three years ago, if you would check the review, you would see that I was really not a big fan of Gunner. If there's not one nitpick about the current roster, it's that there aren't exactly a whole lot of established guys to put over the young guys that they're trying to push over. I mean, you have guys like Samoa Joe and Abyss and Jeff Hardy, I guess you could say. But, I mean, when's the last time you heard someone say, hey, that guy got a victory over Abyss. He's a big deal. So it kind of seems depleted in that sense. But overall, I think for what they have, TNA is doing splendidly. And, 
you know, my favorite knockout would right now have to be Christy Hemi. And since she's getting a storyline with Samuel Shaw and Mr. Kennedy, that's probably the, the storyline I'm most invested in at the moment. So um, it seems like we're always waiting to see what Samuel Shaw is going to do next. At least me and MT Ho are. And that's another thing, the knockouts are finally progressing a little bit. It's great that they're finally using knockouts in storylines outside of the title picture, where Fail Kim can't overshadow them. And it just goes to show that even with a depleted division, you can still get great programs out of all of them that's still fresh and interesting. They're taking people like Christy Hemi, who I've always wanted to TNA to do more with, and now she's in one of the most interesting storylines with one of the most interesting characters in Samuel Shaw. And there's still so much that you can do with this storyline. You know, now that Russo is back, we might even expect a swerve where Christy Hemi turns heel and joins Samuel Shaw. That would be one of the most interesting things that they could do. And that's not the only knockout in an interesting relationship. Velvet Sky has also been having a great feud with Chris Sabin. You know, there's just... You know, there's just so much chemistry between them as personalities that you can't help but be entertained by them. So I hope this feud continues, and I hope it leads to the debut of Santana Garrett. That would easily be one of my early dream matches right there. You know, debut her as a heel, go after Velvet, then use that connection to the beautiful people to transition her into a championship match against Madison Rain. Sounds like the perfect way to debut Santana Garrett. And that's another thing that I like. I didn't even have to beg TNA to sign her. They obviously saw in her what I saw at Knockouts Knockdown, which makes the second time that I spotted talent before anyone else did and ended up being right. The first time I did that was with Summer Rae. And at the same time, every time I've said something was going to flop or do damage is when I was also right, a la Fel Kim's title reign and Lady Tampon's career. And the good thing is, I don't think Russo likes either of them that much. He's more of an advocate for strong personalities, which... Neither of them are. So as long as Russo is in charge and Fail Kim sticks to just being the Kofi Kingston jobber of the division, the knockouts could see some good times ahead. Yeah, I definitely agree with you with the knockouts. And the good thing is, is last night Santana Garrett debuted as Britney. And I haven't seen too much of her from the indie stuff and the indie scene. But from what I saw from her last night against Fail Kim, I was actually kind of impressed. The only thing is, they kind of gave her this generic name and the Terran Terrell attire, so... Another thing that really got me excited for the Knockouts division for months to come, the return of Angelina Love and the beautiful people. That's right, it's been almost three to four years since we've last cared about TNA this month. Right now, TNA finally has variety again. You have your TNA originals, you have upstart newcomers, you have interesting characters, veterans, former WWE stars that we thought five years ago were going to be the future of the company. This is exactly the TNA that I like, so I am going to enjoy it for as long as I can while I still can before TNA makes me start hating them again in a couple months, which is going to happen. They always go through these periods. So things are looking very much up for TNA, but if there's one thing TNA has taught us, it's the not Get your hopes up too high, because reality will come crashing down on you soon enough. And I hope they break their philosophy, but knowing TNA, I'm probably going to say by the end of 2014, I'm not going to want to watch TNA anymore. But hopefully I'm wrong, and future me can want to slap present me right in the face. Anyway, yeah, so if TNA keeps this up, we might do a weekly TNA show review every single week. But that just about wraps it up. I mean, you pretty much said everything I needed to say with the MTOMR reviews saying yada, 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 blah, blah, blah.